How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to show you step by step how to install the Zebra ZD420. This Zebra ZD420. I'm going to show you how to wirelessly network it. We're going to be going over Android, Windows, and Macintosh computers. I'm also going to show you a wired setup for Android and a wired setup for Google Chromebook if for some reason you have this printer or a similar printer and you want to hook it up via USB. It will work for multiple Zebra models, not just the ZD420. A couple models in the same Z series should work perfectly fine and very, very similar process. You would just adjust the driver based off of the exact model that you have. Instead of watching the whole video, if you go in the description, there is a timestamp index with different timestamps that you can click on based on the topic. That way you can go exactly to what system you want to install and watch and don't have to watch the things that you don't really need. So check out that in the description below. I, I do encourage everyone to watch the initial setup because that just helps you know your way around the printer. Before we get into it, it does not work with iPhone. It does not work with iOS to my limited knowledge. All the tinkering that I did, I could not get it to work. I think these models do not work with, I think these models are non-compatible with iOS, but I can get it networked and working on Mac. But overall, the Zebra ZD420 is a pain in the butt to set up. So hopefully this will help. Be sure to pause the video, maybe watch it a couple times if you get stuck. There are very specific details, like if you type one thing wrong, it could just throw off the entire thing and it wouldn't even work. So please be very careful. Do everything exactly as I show you and it should work for you and save you some headache. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and let's get into the printer initial setup. First things first, the way you open this printer up are these two little tabs here. You just pull them towards you, then you can lift the lid. You can either load paper through the back and then you're gonna go under these two little tabs here that'll keep it in place. You can adjust those tabs with this little wheel here or if you have a roll of labels, you can spread that, close it, feed it under there and close the top like that. This specific printer prints in 203 DPI. They do make some 300 DPI models and they use non-proprietary labels, meaning that you could use a punch label from a Dymo perfectly fine. Doesn't matter what type of labels because it's using sensors in here to read in between the labels. You are gonna have to plug your power in. We're not gonna be using USB at this time, so we're gonna unplug that. And in order to turn your printer on, you just hold this power button right here. And it does have some indicator LED lights. Orange means it's not ready. Uh, the printer is not in status ready. So maybe it doesn't have labels in it or it's still like booting. So let's add some labels to it right now. Okay, we get a green status light. That means it's good to go. It does have a pause indicator. So you hit the pause button and it fed one label. My printer is set up to, if I open the top and close the top, I have to hit the unpause button and it'll feed one label every single time. This indicator right here that you can't see it, it has, I think it means data transfer. It's a little folder, meaning that there's data getting sent to the printer. The next indicator I think is a low label roll indicator. So if your label roll is super low, it'll light up, meaning that you're gonna be running out of labels soon. This is our network indicator, red meaning that it's not connected to a network and it will be green if we successfully are connected to the network, which will be important later on in the video. As you can see, that feed button feeds a label. This X will cancel a job that you sent to the printer. Say you sent something that you actually don't wanna print, you can hit cancel and pause. We'll just pause the state of the printer. Up here is an NFC function, which you will see later on in the video. I wanna show you how to calibrate this via buttons in case you don't have a phone or a computer connected to it and you still need to calibrate it. You hold these two buttons down for a couple of seconds and it will start a manual calibration where the printer is kind of remembering the distance between the labels by reading where a label starts and where a label stops. So that was just a manual calibration for this four by six roll of labels. Anytime you change labels, you're gonna wanna calibrate it. You can calibrate it through the app as you'll see later on this video, or you can do a button calibration like that. I wanna show you guys how to print out a network and a printer configuration label, which you hold down these two buttons right here. 
some stuff will start blinking and then it will print out both a printer configuration which has a lot of information such as how many labels have been printed on it and some of the settings as well as a network configuration which we will need later on in this video. And another interesting feature about this printer that you probably should know is that if you turn it around, there is this little hole down here. And if you press that with a pen or a paper clip for zero to one seconds, it doesn't do anything. If you hold it between one and five seconds, it'll do a factory reset on the printer and then it will print you a configuration and a network label, but it won't mess with your network settings. If you hold it between six seconds and 10 seconds, it will do a network reset and then it will print you a configuration and a network settings. And then if you hold it for more than 10 seconds, it won't do anything, it'll exit out of that. Right now we have a LED indicator for our network red. We need to turn that indicator green. I'm gonna show you how to set it up using an Android device. Should work with a phone or a tablet. Um, specifically, I'm on a Google Pixel 3XL. You're gonna have to go to your Google Play Store, type in Zebra Printer, and you're gonna download this app called Zebra Printer Setup Utility. Hit install. Print Connect is not what you want. Zebra Utilities and Print Station is not what you want. It's this blue one called Zebra Printer Setup Utility. It's got bad reviews. It's got bad 2.8 star reviews because probably a lot of people don't know how to use it. We're not gonna open it just yet. You're gonna wanna make sure your Bluetooth is on and you're also gonna wanna go to, you're also gonna wanna go to your Android settings and make sure this thing called NFC, near field communication is on. That's how I'm going to be connecting to the printer. So right here, there's this little phone with a little wireless signal coming out of it. I'm going to tap my phone uh, where the NFC is, which on the Google Pixel is right here underneath the fingerprint sensor. I'm just gonna tap my phone, move it around a little bit until I feel the vibration, until this pops up, says complete action using printer setup. You're gonna wanna make sure you pick using that Zebra printer setup utilities, and then I'm gonna hit just once it's gonna open that app. You gotta allow it to use the location while using the app, that's fine. I'm gonna hit dismiss there. And now it says that it's looking for printer from tap to pair. So it's connecting to the printer via that tap to pair function via your Bluetooth and your NFC. Okay. We are connected to our printer via Bluetooth using that tap to pair. Now this within this app is where you can change a lot of the settings on the printer. You can change your media size. That's what it popped out when I calibrated 4.02 by 6.08. You can change your print quality, your speed or your darkness. You can go over here to printer actions and you can calibrate from the app. So it'll do a manual calibration now instead of having to hold the buttons down like we did earlier. You can print a test label. It's not very fast, but it does print a test label. You can print your configuration label. The configuration label is taking a while to print. The configuration label took a while to print, maybe 30 seconds or so. I don't know if the app's buggy or if that's just how long it's supposed to take, but the goal of us connecting is to get this on a wireless network. So I'm gonna go here to connectivity settings. I'm gonna go to wireless and we're just going to hit next. We're gonna hit next again. And here where it says ESSID, that is your network name. So whatever your network is at your house that you use, I'm gonna go to the Wi-Fi icon on my phone. There it is, Spearsy Town underscore 5G. That's what we're gonna type in here. You cannot make any mistakes, otherwise it will not work. Underscore 5 capital G. I'm gonna go back just to double check. Oh, I got a capital T, so I gotta go back. I'm not 100% sure if it's case sensitive or not, but it won't hurt to put case sensitive on there. So here's where it can get confusing for people. Security mode. There is a network with no security. There's WEP, EEP, 
peep, leap, this, all this WPA stuff. But for the most part, it's going to either be none if you don't have a password on your wireless, if you live in the middle of nowhere and nobody's around you, maybe you don't have a wireless password, you can go to none. But for me, and for most people, you're going to go to WPA PSK. That's the wireless security type. If you go to your network settings, you can see here I have a WPA forward slash WPA2 forward slash WPA3 personal under security. That's where WPA PSK security mode comes in. Then I'm going to hit next. It's gonna ask me for the WPA PSK. So this is where you type in your wireless password. Ours is lowercase year of the pig. You cannot make a mistake here, otherwise you're not gonna be able to get your printer on your network. I'm gonna hit next, and then I'm going to hit apply. And that is now sending all of those settings to the printer. So the printer now is going to know it's supposed to connect to that wireless network. So it's gonna search for that wireless network and then it's gonna put in that password to try to get on your wireless network. I'm gonna hit reset. And it's gonna reset the printer and when the printer boots, this is going to try to connect to my network and it should turn green. Bam, there we go. So we are now on our wireless network at our house. So any device connected to your wireless network, once you install the printer on that device, we'll be able to print to this printer without any cords or anything. So it's now networked. Then later on in this video, we're gonna go over how to install this printer once it's networked on a Windows, a Mac, or on a Android device. I have Now that I showed you how to pair and set up the printer on a network with an Android, I'm gonna show you how to pair and set up the printer on a Windows computer. Now we're gonna network this and set it up with a Windows computer. You have to start the process with a USB cable plugged into the back of your printer, but don't plug it into your computer just yet. You need to do it when it asks you, otherwise you'll have to install it manually. They can kind of get, uh, the computers can kind of get fussy about it for whatever reason on Windows. But as you can see, we have a red indicator, meaning that we're not connected to any network right now. And we're gonna program the printer for those settings using our Windows computer. And in order to do that, I have to show you guys on the computer. So we're gonna go into the computer. So here we are on the computer. You need to use this program called Zebra Setup Utilities. And that is a free program that you can get from zebra.com. I will put a link to this in the description. You get it right here. It's for Windows and it's a 12 megabyte file. You'll, you'll download it, install it, and then you'll have to run it. You do that by double clicking on that icon right there. Hit yes. And we're going to install the printer using a USB port. I'm gonna hit next. Please connect the printer and power it on. So we're going to turn the printer off real quick. And now I'm going to plug it in. And now I'm going to turn the printer back on. Hopefully it will recognize it and install the printer automatically, which it's not, but that's okay. We're gonna go to manual install and it takes a couple of seconds for the manual installer to pop up. So here we're gonna hit next. We're gonna go to install printer. It's very important that you pick the correct driver. We have the ZD420 and it's the 203 DPI and we're going to pick the ZPL driver. I'm Hit next and here it's asking what port we're going to use we're going to use usb 0001 and it's going to be default printer for this computer we're going to hit next don't need to install the font downloader i'm going to finish and it's going to install the driver it's going to take a couple of minutes okay so it finished installing the driver i'm going to x out of there and you can see a printer is installed here. We're going to go to configure print settings. Width, we're gonna to change to four. Height, we're gonna to change to six because we're printing four by six shipping labels. So you would just change that to whatever label you're gonna be printing. And we're going to hit finish. I'm gonna pull up a sample label. I have one at fulfilledmerchant.com uh, on a blog post. I will put a link to this in the description. You just click download here. 
then hit print. Make sure that you pick the right printer, ED420, and it should send a print signal to your printer via USB. And there we go. We have a beautiful sample label. And up there, if you didn't already see that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. Um, so now that we have it set up via USB, we're going to change some settings to network the printer. We have to go back to our Zebra setup utilities. We're going to go to configure print connectivity, wireless, DCHP, hit next, next, next. And then right here is very important. Where it says ESSID, you're going to look at your network and see what you're connected to at your house or at your office or wherever, where you are going to be having this printer, you're going to have to connect to that wireless network name. So you have to type this in by hand. You can't make any mistakes. Mine's called Spearsytown underscore 5G. Depending on your router and your security mode, this setting is going to be different. It's very important you pick the correct one. If you have no security at all, no password, you're going to go to none. If you have a WEP, you have to pick which one it is. But more than likely, you're going to be WPAPSK forward slash WPA2 dash PSK. And you can go back to your network, go to properties, scroll down, and you can see your security type right here. And you want to match it. Mine's WPA2, a oh, personal, and that's the WPA2 dash PSK, this one right here. So I'm going to hit next. Now you have to type in your password, but you have to go over here to string, not hex decimals, because you're going to be just typing it in if your password's uh, some letters or some letters and numbers. So mine is year of the pig. Next, next. And then this is the code that it's going to send to the printer to let the printer know that it's supposed to connect to that network. I'm going to hit finish. And then it should change this red indicator from the network is just network reset. It told the printer, hey, this is the network you're supposed to connect to. This is the password. And this should go from red to green, meaning that we are now going on the wireless network. There we go. So. We are now connected to the Wi-Fi with the printer. So we're no longer going to need this cord. We're going to unplug it, but we have to do a couple more settings. So we're going to need to print a network configuration label, which is these two buttons right here. Hold them down for about two seconds. And we get our network configuration, which is right here at the top. You can see that our IP address IP address is what's important right here. This is the 192.168.001.035. That is what we're going to need back on the computer. Go down here, type in print and scanners. You're going to come to this and you're going to find your printer, the Zebra ZD420 or whatever your printer is. Go to manage, go to printer properties, and up here to ports. And you can see that it still is connected to a USB port. We're going to change that to a network port. And to do that, you can go to add port. It's going to be a standard TCP forward slash IP port. Go to new port. And the port address was on our configuration label 192.168. And you're going to ignore the zeros here. So I'm instead of 0.001, I'm going to put 0.1, 0.35. And that's my network map. And I'm gonna, you're gonna wanna make sure you do it all correctly. I could have just messed it up right there. And my port name, I'm gonna type in ZD420 and that will, that will let me know the name of the port when we go back in a second. So next, the device could not be determined. That's okay. It's gonna hit next, finish, and close. So that is our new port, ZD420 with our IP address that we printed from. You do need to hit apply and okay for it to save the settings. And then we're gonna open up our sample label, hit control P or file print, pick your printer, uh, unplug the USB. And now it should send it and it send it through the router to the printer without any issues. There are a couple of settings as you can see right here, the label is kind of uh, kind of grainy right there at the bottom. 
And I'm going to go in here to uh, printer printing preferences, go to stock. Oh, sorry, go to graphics. And you want to put that dithering on none and then hit apply. Now, if you print a label, I don't know how, if you can see the different, yeah, there you go. That is with the dithering off and that is with uh, the dithering on halftone. So that setting makes your label look a lot clearer. So that's how you network it on a Windows computer. Now that we have it connected to our network, we're going to network it with a Mac computer. We're now going to install this printer with a Mac. If you are going to do it via USB cable, you may need a dongle like this if you have a newer Mac because we only have USB-C ports. I will put a link to the dongle in the description. First, I'll show you guys how to set it up if you're using the USB, and then I'll show you how to network it with the Mac. You cannot set up your network settings with a Mac. To my knowledge, the configuration, the initial network can only be done on Windows or on Android, which I already have showed earlier in the video. You gotta have this green network light right here. We're gonna then connect this to the network and set that all up. But in order to show you that, we'll have to go into the computer. But before we do that, I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna go into the back here, and then we will put this into the computer. So here we are on a Mac. My printer is plugged in via USB. I'm going to go to System Preferences down here, the little gear icon, and click that, and go to Printers and Scanners. And if you don't have this little gear icon down here, you can go to the little finder up here and type in Printers and Scanners, and it will come up that way as well. Ignore all these printers. These are already installed on my computer, and we're going to install the ZD420 by hitting the plus sign right here. And there it is, popped up. If it doesn't pop up on your computer, try power cycling the printer, turning it on, turning it off, and it should pop up. So we're gonna highlight that. And down here where it says use, we're going to go to select software, and we're going to type in Zebra, and we're going to pick the ZPL label printer driver, and we're going to hit okay. We're going to hit add. We're going to print a sample label. I have a link to this in the description. If you don't have a label handy, we're gonna hit Command P or you can go to File, Print. And this gives us our print dialog. I'm in Google Chrome. You're gonna wanna make sure you pick your new printer. So I'm gonna go to Destination, See More, and then Zebra ZD420. Uh, we're gonna make sure our paper size is four by six. Fit to printable area. And then we're going to hit Print. It's gonna send the signal to the printer. For some reason, after installing the printer, I had to unplug it and plug it back in once in order for it to work. But I'm going to hit Command P, pick my printer, pick my dimension four by six, and I'm going to hit print. It's gonna send the signal to the printer, and there it is. Um, these barcodes will come out a little bit fuzzier than they do on a Windows PC. It's something to do with the way that the drivers work. I'm not 100% sure why it does that, but it will scan from USPS. You're not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. The printer's not doing anything wrong. It's just that's the way that it is printing these on a Mac. But that's how we set it up wired. Now I'm going to go in and delete the printer we just installed, and then I'm going to show you guys how to set it up wirelessly. So I'm going to unplug this and I will see you guys back on the computer. So this is the printer we just installed. I'm just going to remove it. I'm gonna show you guys how to install it wirelessly. So we're gonna hit the plus sign again, and instead of picking anything, we're gonna go up here to IP. And if you remember, Earlier on in the video, we printed out a network configuration. Now we're going to have to either hold these two buttons and print out another network configuration, or you're gonna have to just go to the network configuration that you did earlier and reference that to get that IP address, which uh, in my case is right here, 192.168.001.035. But for whatever reason, we have to type it in 
0.1.35. We take out those zeros, and then we're going to pick line printer daemon, and then we're going to name it ZD420. And where it says use, we're going to go. We're going to go to select software, kind of like we did earlier, and type in Zebra ZPL label printer, and then we're going to hit OK, and then we're going to hit add. If your printer was networked correctly and you typed everything in correctly, pick the right driver. You should have the printer right here. We're going to pull up the sample label once more and hit Command P. Pick the printer. Well, it automatically picked the printer four by six, and I'm going to send the signal to the printer. And it just printed without any wires. Looks pretty much the same as our wired print. That is how you set it up with a Mac. Before we go, I want to show you a couple of settings. If you go to print using system dialog, you can go to uh, layout, drop down, go to printer features, and then printer settings. You can change uh, darkness, print speed, and all that jazz. Probably, probably darkness and print speed, print rate is all that you would mess with. Uh, now that you have the printer set up, if you're printing shipping from a certain platform from like eBay or from Etsy, you're going to have to go into the platform itself and change it to 4x6. I do have a video on that I'll put in the corner. I'll also put a link to that in the description. It's very important that you watch that video and change those settings. Otherwise, you're not going to be printing correctly uh, the correct dimensions and it's just going to be frustrating for you. So I encourage you to go check that video out. Uh, but that is how you set up the ZD420 wirelessly and wired on a Macintosh computer. This printer does work with Android devices via a cord and a USB converter with the NOCO print app. I do have a tutorial showing how to do this. It's the same step-by-step -step for this printer as I'll show in the video in the corner and I'll put a link to the video in the description as well. Just like that. If you're looking to set this printer up on a Google Chromebook, you are going to need the USB cable and then a USB converter if your Chromebook only uses USB-C. I will put a link to this little dongle in the description. But it does work. I'm gonna print this sample label right here. Pretty good. And the way you install this, I have a tutorial showing uh, specifically a different printer, but it's the same process. I'll put a link to that in the corner and in the description. It has, it uses the same driver, same process and everything. And that's the tutorial on the Zebra ZD420. If you have any insight or any questions, put them in the comments section. I do thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.